me show you the easy way to go to pull a front diff out of an envoy rather than do the stupid retarded whatever they do with GM. So these rear diffs, the front diffs, sorry, it's light, I'm working all night on this one. They're up in here, they're bolted to the oil pan and they are a cocksucker. And then on this side, you've got your actuator, your lock-in front diff actuator. And in between them, there's about a one foot shaft that goes in there. So first thing, pull the wheel off. The easiest way I did it was, I just pulled this, take the tie rod, let's see if you can see here, take the tie rod off. A lot of times if you just take like a ball peen hammer and smack the side of this, they'll just pop right out. So you pop that, pop this out, make sure you get your cords, yeah, get it where you can see, get your cords loose, you're not gonna tear them. Press your brake, brake pads back, be easy. And then when you leave your, leave your axle nut on on this side, it's what I found to be easiest where you can just barely get enough room to where you can pull this back and then you can actually pull the axle out of the actuator inside there. And that goes for both sides. So you pull the axle on the inside first. And when I just took like a big rock bar, came up, came up right in here towards the axle and just gave it one little bump and it popped right out. So once you get the axle out, then there's four, four bolts. You can see it right there. Four bolts are on the actuator. There's, there's a, another set of bolts there that you don't want to pull. That'll actually take the actuator apart. So you pull the ones that are bolted in the oil pan. Once you get that out, now I've already got this out. I just want to go over it. Well, the, a lot of times you can just wiggle and get that shaft out. Mine wouldn't come out, so I, I actually took a strap and wrapped around it and then pulled it over the top of itself and held the other end tight and then gave a good smack and it popped out. There's other ways of doing it, but that was what I had, so that's what I did. The, uh, you come over, there's four bolts in the diff let me see if i can get a picture one here one above that and right in here you've got see the front diff you've got the one bolt here and then there's a bolt right down here and that's your four bolts before you get to there though you're going to pull the drive line out there's a whole bunch of bracketry i'll show you it's on the ground right here All that crap. You're gonna pull that out. So there's there's a bunch of bolts up in here, some from the bottom going up in. You're gonna pull all that and get that out, the two pieces of brackets, get them out of the way. And then up here, you can get some light so you can see. You can see the, the rack and pinion where it connects. There's a rubber boot that goes in between that. That's off right now. You have to shove it up. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Shove it up, pull out a 15 millimeter head bolt and then you just slip it up off there. Make sure you're not spinning that because if you keep if you spin this, it'll break the clock spring up inside and then you'll be replacing that and it's not cheap. So you, once you push that up, you leave it there, kind of leave the rack of pinion where it is because it's disconnected. On the other side, there's two lines right right up in here. Let's see if, you, if I can show you those. Yeah, right there. If Maybe you can see that, uh, hopefully. I don't know if I can, I can really see what I'm going to show on you here. I'm going to flip the camera around real quick. Anyway, there's an eight millimeter bolt up in there. You pull that eight millimeter bolt, you can slip those two lines out. It's pretty simple. Don't lose the bolt. Keep track of your stuff. There's O-rings in there. You may need to replace them, may not, depending on how clean or dirty it is or how old it is. And then there's these big 21 millimeter bolts, nut on the backside, pull those out and drop the whole rack and pinion out. This side, the axle, basically the same as the other side. Pretty, pretty straightforward on that. Okay. Once you get your axles out, you get your actuator off. You get your center shaft out of the, out of the oil pan there. You get, you get your diff loose and everything away. And then what I did was I went up on the top side and spun the fan off and got it out of the way to where I could jack the motor up. You can go right up from the bottom, and there's. Let's see if I can show you here. I can get my camera right, right there's a motor mount nut take that off one on each side take those nuts off and then I put it you know if you 
I've done this on the ground before. It's a pain in the ass, but it lifts way easier. But you, you jack the oil pan up and and just jack it up until it kind of stops. You know, don't be an idiot about it and jack it into the firewall so hard it starts breaking stuff. You you have to watch the fan as you go up. If it, if it catches, it can actually break the shroud. So, so you want to keep an eye on that. Make sure you're not jacking stuff up there because it'll break before you know it when you got hydraulic pressure on it. So once you got that out, this you can kind of roll this diff around, you know, and move it around, but it it is not coming out of there, I guarantee it. So what I did, and I've done this several times, is I take a little jack like this, you, you know, you find them in the back of pickups or, you know, whatever, the jack comes in them. And I take it and I stick it right up in there against the cross member and then up against the oil pan and then all you need is a screwdriver or something or whatever, you know, your jack tool. And you start get, you know, so basically what you do is you've got the everything loose. You've got the oil pan, you, the engine raised up as far as it'll go without breaking anything, which, I mean, you go quite a ways. It'll, it'll push up against the firewall it, without really breaking anything. You, I mean, you can put a little pressure on it. Don't get wild with it. And then once you get it up there, then you put that jack in there and push the engine to the passenger side. When you do that, this diff will fall right out. I mean, and you'd be, be ready to catch it, but you gotta kind of finagle it around and get it just in the right way and it will come out. This is the fastest way I've found to do it. Otherwise, you gotta go to the top and they want you to take off the motor mount, the ECU, all this bullshit, hoses, lines, all this crap up there and go out through the top with it and it's freaking retarded. Like I probably pull the motor faster to get all that out of the way or, or pull the whole cab off. You know, it takes me an hour and a half to pull a body off one of these to get to the motor. And so th this is a, the, essentially the fastest way I've, I've found to do this. It works pretty good. Um, yeah, that, so there's the cheat and it may not be right or whatever. I don't really give a shit. I care about making money and getting things done and, and this one's kind of a, a gimme anyway so i'm gonna get it done as fast as i can so yeah hopefully that helps a few of you on, on this idiotic design that they decided to do without you know it, it would have been pretty simple just to build things just you know these brackets and stuff just a tiny bit different and all this would have come right out no problem but no they can't you know they they assemble these from from the frame drop the engine in drop the body on and that's how they assemble them and that's how they want you to fix them basically so you got to be smart and creative sometime so there it is if you have any questions let me know